sin. Everybody at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. And now I am happy all the day. But drops of grief can ne'er repay the debt of love I owe. Here, Lord, I give myself away. Tis all that. At the cross where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight and now I am happy all the day. Let's clap our hands together. Let's thank him for it. Hallelujah. My, my, my. Praise God. You, that's the kind of song you just want to sing over and over. And there's lots of ways to sing it, but you all did a great job. And Brother French is coming. God bless Brother French. Let's give the Lord a hand one more time for the word of the Lord. Praise God. I'll hand this to you. Amen. Clint, can we clap our hands to the Lord one more time and just thank him for his presence that we feel in this room? How many believe that we serve a good God in this house? He's worthy of all the praise. And uh, I love that song. My, my favorite lyric in that song is, it was there by faith I received my sight. You know, everything changes when you do things by faith. Anybody have faith in the house this morning? Can we lift our hands and just praise him and prepare our hearts for just a moment? We love you, Jesus. We thank you for your presence that's in this place. God, we pray you'd move in this house this morning. We thank you for the opportunity to be a part of what you're doing. And everybody said, in Jesus' name. We're going to turn to John chapter 10 and verse 23. If you can remain standing for the reading of the word, and then I'll let you be seated. Um, John chapter 10, verse 23. Um, And before we read our text this morning, I just want to say how excited I am to get to be with the big kids this morning. Um, I'm usually in youth class as the youth pastor And uh, I get to hang out with all of these amazing students here every Sunday and every Wednesday. And I'm just excited to to be with the big kids in Sunday school today. Uh, And it's a great honor and a privilege to get to speak to you this morning. Isn't it a good day to live for God? Amen. It's a good day to live for him. John chapter 10 and verse 23. It says, and Jesus walked in the temple. In Solomon's porch. Then the Jews surrounded him and said to him, How long do you keep us in doubt? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them and said, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me, but you do not believe. Because you are not my sheep, as I said to you, my sheep hear my voice. Can you say that with me? My sheep hear my voice. Can you say it one more time? My sheep hear my voice. And I know them. And they follow me. Anybody glad to be following Jesus today? It says, and I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. And no one, everybody say, no one. Why don't you just shake your finger at the devil and say, no one is able to snatch them Out of my father's hand, I and my father are one. I want to teach to you for a few moments this morning, in these few moments we have together, 
on three ways that Jesus speaks. Three ways that Jesus is still speaking. How many knows he's still speaking to the church today? Would you put your Bibles down and lift your hands one more time and let's go before him. Jesus, we love you today. We're so thankful for your presence that we feel in this house. God, help us as we dive a little bit deeper into your word. Lord, we love this, uh, this early morning hour where we get to just step back and slow down a little bit and take a look at your word. Thank you for these faithful people that get here early because they, they want to know more about you and they want to be faithful to your word. We'll be sure to give you all the praise for the great things that you're going to do. I wonder if we could just wake ourselves up by clapping our hands and giving God a praise. And you know, sometimes you can give God a shout of praise at 10 o'clock. You don't even have to wait till 11 o'clock. But you can praise him right here. Look at your neighbor and tell him, Jesus still speaks, and you may be seated. You may be seated. Thank you. Communication is an extremely important thing. If you are bad at communication, you will run into a lot of struggles in your life. And I'll be the first to say, sometimes I'm not the greatest at communication. Anybody else struggle with that sometimes? Sometimes I struggle and I'll feel like I've said something that it ends up I didn't say. I thought I said, and I thought I told somebody something that I didn't tell them. And uh, communication is so important when it comes to the kingdom of God because God is always wanting to communicate with us. It is his desire and his will to speak to us. Communication by definition is the imparting or exchanging of information to news. Every husband dreads These seven dreadful words. Did you hear anything I just said? This is a difficult moment because those seven words are only heard when you know you haven't been listening. Can I get an amen, somebody? No no husband likes to hear that. Did, Did you hear what I just said? Sometimes... We miss out on what someone is trying to say because we are distracted by everything that is around us and everything that is weighing on our minds. Can you look over at your neighbor and tell him, Jesus is speaking, but ask him, say, but are you listening? Manny, can you come help me with something real quick? Can y'all give it up for our cadet, Manny Varian? We love him so much. I'm so proud of these cadets that have been up here and making a difference for the kingdom of God, working hard for the people of God. Manny's going to help me real quick with something. He's got some music here. He's going to play for you. Can y'all hear that music? Okay. Everybody, can you raise your hand if you hear that sound? Do you hear that music? Okay. Go ahead and bring it down, Manny. Now, here's the thing. We can't hear it, but that song is still playing. So bring it back up for me, Manny. Now, if you notice something important here, it's still playing, but it's farther along in the song. Go ahead and bring it back down. Does anybody hear the song now? Because Manny's actions and what he does, the action that he takes determines on whether he hears the song or not. And the song is still playing, whether we're listening to it or not. And so if he brings the song back up, it's at a different part of the song. And I would bring it to our attention today that Jesus is always singing his song. And he's always speaking to his people. And if we tune out, we miss what he says sometimes. Sometimes Jesus will not repeat himself. Can I get a witness in this house? When God speaks, it's forever settled in heaven. 
And sometimes we miss the most important part of this song. Thank you, Manny. Can you give it up for Manny for helping us out today? Jesus is always speaking. He's always moving. He's always breathing. And he's always wanting to communicate with us. But we get distracted and we miss out. One of the number one things that I face as a youth pastor trying to help young people go to heaven. Don't you want to see our students go to heaven? That is my greatest desire is to see our students go to heaven and to see my children go to heaven and be raised in truth. And the number one thing that usually fights them is distraction. They're distracted by everything that's around them. They want to hear the voice of God. They are committed to God. I believe that every person in this room, I understand who I'm speaking to today. I'm speaking to a very faithful core group of people that want to hear the voice of God. But even some of us in this room, we can get distracted. And when we get distracted, we miss a part of the song. We miss a part of what Jesus is trying to say. Oftentimes we miss what Jesus is saying, even though we can tell that he is speaking because we can't focus because of all of the distractions around us. And so in this lesson this morning, I want to quickly share um, three ways that Jesus speaks to his people. Jesus is speaking The question is not, is he speaking? The question is, are we listening? Are we listening? And I like to call this, you know, uh, I'm a youth pastor, so we have to try to think of, you know, fancy creative titles so students will pay attention. So I'll just share it with you, even though I know this is this is something you guys probably don't need in big kids class. But. Um, I like to call it the three C's of communication. The three C's of communication. And before I do that, I want to define the difference between hearing and listening. Is that okay this morning? There is a difference between hearing and listening. Hearing is the process, the function or the ability to perceive sound. So I have a question for you. Did everybody hear that sound that came out of the speakers when that song came on? Does anybody know what words they were saying? Did anybody catch? Sarah did, because she's on the praise team. But Did anybody catch some of those lyrics? No, because you were hearing the sound... But when somebody's, I was talking all all over the top of that. There was all kinds of distractions happening. So you were, you were hearing the sound, but you weren't listening to what it was saying because there was a youth pastor distracting you. Hearing and listening are different things. Listening, by definition, is to give attention to the sound. Man, I feel a little preach in Sunday school today. Everybody's hearing the sound. But not everybody is giving attention to the sound and hearing what it's saying. You can hear something that you are not listening to. James talked about this in the Bible. James chapter 1. In verse 22, I'm reading from the New King James Version this morning. It says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away. And immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks 
into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. There is a difference in hearing and listening. Many have the ability to hear, but few have the ability to listen. Anyone can hear the words, but doers actually listen to what it says and move to action. Listeners take action. Everybody say action. Because they gave attention to what they heard. We all have known people in our lives that have heard the word. They've heard the gospel. They've heard teachings on truth and holiness. They've heard the sound, but they have not given attention to the sound. And I believe that we're going to see a revival of not just hearing, but people that are going to listen to what the word of God has to say. If you believe it, would you clap your hands and give him praise for just a moment? I believe we're going to see a revival of that. I've, I've, been, I've been seeing it with my own eyes. I've seen what Jesus is doing. I, you know, you have to... It sounds like I'm being critical to the hearer. It sounds like I'm being critical to just hearing the sound. But don't underestimate the power of what happens because faith comes by. Faith comes by hearing. And so even though you've been teaching that Bible study for years and they've been hearing, but they haven't been listening you, you haven't seen them take action doesn't mean that God is not working in their lives. I have given Bible studies. One of my best friends, I gave him a Bible study on baptism for five years. A five-year Bible study. And we'd get together and he'd talk to me and it sounded like he agreed with everything I said. But then I never saw him take action. I need to get baptized, he said. I think I see it in scripture. He was hearing it. He heard the sound. And I felt in my heart, you know, if we're honest sometimes, in our flesh, we feel like nothing is happening. And so we get discouraged. Has anybody ever been discouraged before? I know that I have. And I was in a season of just wondering, Lord, what, what are you trying to do? And it felt like it was just a sound. But God was doing a great work in that person's life. And it was five years later that they came to me and said, would you baptize me? But also my wife, who's been an atheist her whole life, she wants to be baptized in the name of Jesus too. Because sometimes God is doing a deeper work than we can understand because he's speaking to his people. God is still speaking to his people. Can you lift your hands for just a moment? I'm moving quickly, but can we just pray for a moment and say, God, would you speak to us in this house today? God's putting people in your mind that you've been praying for, and it feels like nothing's been happening. But God is doing a work in their life. You're going to see it come into fruition you're going to see it come to pass. Listeners take action, but it doesn't always happen overnight. In John chapter 10 and verse 27, Jesus said, he said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them. Watch this action and they follow me. And I feel the Holy Ghost in this room this morning. Hearing was important. But what kept the sheep safe was that they listened to what they heard. Sheep have to listen to their shepherd or they end up 
fallen off a mountain somewhere. And that's, that's, every one of us have experienced that in our lives where we, we stepped out and tried to do things on our own and we quickly realized that, that we were lost and that we were that one that Jesus had to come after. He left the 99 to come after us. Aren't you glad that Jesus came after you? He came after me. He doesn't give up on us. And they follow me. They don't just hear, they listen. Their attentiveness to his voice moves them to action. How many love his voice this morning? I believe that. I believe that. In this very chapter of scripture, we see the example of hearers. Can somebody say hearers who weren't actually listening? It's in the Bible. There are many examples in Scripture where Jesus is speaking and they're hearing his words, but no one is listening. Can I just speak encouragement to somebody who's been trying to reach somebody in your life? Maybe it's a lost loved one or a friend, somebody you've been trying to reach for a long time. If there were people that wouldn't even listen to Jesus... We have to be careful when we think everybody should listen to us. You're so hard on yourself because you feel like your words are not having power. And there is no word more powerful than the word of Jesus Christ. When he speaks, stars are created and galaxies are formed. When he speaks, everything changes. And he was speaking. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and people were not listening. Look over at your neighbor and just tell him, don't be so hard on yourself. It's going to be okay. Don't be so hard on yourself. God's doing a great work in this house today. There are many examples. In John chapter 10, Jesus is revealing to the people that he is, in fact, the Messiah, He is God manifested in flesh. He, the Messiah, who has come to die for their sins and to save the world, he is telling them that he is God. That's an important message that you didn't want to miss. But they missed it. We have to be careful not to miss what God is saying. Because in John 10 and 29, he said, My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. And no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. But watch this. The Jews took up their stones again to stone him. They heard him, but they did not believe him. They heard him, but they did not listen to what he was saying. Even though truth, truth itself was speaking. How does one not believe When truth is speaking, the word who became flesh is speaking and they cannot hear him. Jesus is speaking. Are you listening? Are you listening? I I was preaching somewhere it was actually in Georgia, and it was, it was a few years ago now. And I started praying this very dangerous prayer. And there's, there's a dangerous thing about prayer. And I know Sister Lucas will testify to this. How many are thankful for the prayers of Brother and Sister Lucas? Oh, I love Brother and Sister Lucas. They've covered me in prayer time and time again. And uh, I prayed this dangerous prayer. I said, 
Would you help me to hear your voice? And there's this crazy thing that happens when you pray is sometimes God will answer you. He'll answer your prayer. And so I would start to go to meetings and the Lord would begin to speak to me about things that were going on. And I had prayed that prayer and I was walking in, I I was preaching a youth rally that night and I was walking into that service and there was some people over by a church van. There was a group of people that had come to go to that youth rally that night and they looked panicked. They were gathered around the church van and I heard somebody shout out, she's having a heart attack. And I was about to walk into the service and I saw a panicked group. It was a youth group of about 10 people on a church van. And I felt like the Lord spoke to me and said, I want to heal her tonight before this service begins. I know that God had spoken. But if I'm being honest with you, everything inside of me wanted to keep walking I wanted to keep walking because I was afraid of what if I pray the prayer of faith and nothing happens? Isn't pride a horrible thing? It will just get all in the way of what God wants to do. And I did this horrible thing. I I started thinking about me and how awkward it might be if I were to walk into a service and preach right after praying for somebody and declaring that they would be healed and they weren't healed. That's what pride will do. That's not the voice of God. That's what pride will do. And pride comes before a fall. And the Lord started speaking to me. I tried to take one more step in my flesh and Jesus said, I want to heal her before this service starts and I will use this for my glory for the remainder of what I'm gonna do through this evening. And so I listened to that voice. And I walked over to the church van. There was about 10 people gathered around her. They were panicked. A couple of them were crying. She looked very ill. And I said, I'm going to pray for her if that's okay. They were calling an ambulance. I said, I'm going to lay my hand on your head and I'm going to speak the name of Jesus. And when I speak the name of Jesus, I believe that God is going to heal you. I put my hand on on her head and I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that you would heal her and raise her up. And I prayed in that moment and I looked around and it felt like nothing happened. And the ambulance pulled up and they pulled out a stretcher and they put her on that ambulance and they drove her to the hospital. And I went into the service And I started preaching. And I felt such a peace come over me because I knew no matter what, I had listened to the voice of God. And I was about halfway through. Man, I'm emotional just thinking about it this morning. I haven't relived this moment in a while. But about halfway through my message, I looked down on the front row. She was sitting on the left side and she was there. And I went up to her and I said, what are you doing here? You were just having a heart attack in the service. And she looked at me confused, like, why are you asking me? You told me I was going to be healed. Why are you surprised right now? But there's this crazy thing. When we call on the name of the Lord, he responds to us. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place this morning. And she said, I don't know what to tell you, Brother Nathan, but I I went to the doctor and he looked at, they did all these scans and they said, I don't know what to tell you, but everything seems to be fine now. He said, where did you come from? The doctor said, where are you coming from? She said, I was at a Pentecostal church service 
and I just came from the church service. I had a heart attack at that service, and he said, whatever you, wherever you came from, you need to get back there as quick as you can. I would get connected to that church because you've been completely healed. Everything is fine. I'm telling you, we have to be willing to listen. Why don't we just praise him for just a moment? However you feel, I know it's early, I know that we're tired, but can you just praise him however you feel? You can lift your voice, you can clap your hands, but I just feel like the Lord is speaking to us today, and he's calling us in this lesson through the teaching of his word. He's just saying, I want to draw you closer to me. I want you to hear my voice. There's three C's of communication, three ways that Jesus speaks. One of the first ways that you see him speak in scripture is through commandments. Commandments are God's word. It's what he has spoken that is settled. It doesn't change. How many knows Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, And forever. And God has spoken to his people in commandments. And commandment is almost like an unpopular word in our culture. Nobody likes to be commanded in this culture. Because if we're being honest, we live in a culture that struggles with submission And we live in a culture that struggles with authority. And so to be commanded feels unnatural to this generation. But it's in God's word. Matter of fact, there's at least ten commandments. They weren't. God didn't write it on the tablets and call them the ten recommendations. They were ten Commandments. And when you're standing in front of the murderer who wants to take your life, you don't want it to be a recommendation. You want it to be a commandment. We want commandments to work for us, but not through us. We want commandments to protect us, but then we struggle to be covered. By what the word of God is saying to us. And God has always spoken to his people through commandments. In Exodus 34 and verse 31. It says then Moses called to them. And Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned to him. And Moses talked with them. Afterward all the children of Israel came near. And he gave them as. Everybody say commandments. And all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. A commandment by definition is uh, a, a divine word, especially one of the Ten Commandments. God still speaks through his commandments in Exodus chapter 20. And Brother L.J. Harry's book, Ten Words, uh, it gives us a practical look at the Ten Commandments. I highly recommend this book. It's very enjoyable. It's a short book. It's called Ten Words by L.J. Harry, and it's a very good practical look at the commandments of the Lord. And he goes through it, the Ten Commandments. He talks about worship, idolatry, swearing, Sabbath, honor, murder, cheating, stealing, Lying and envy. It goes through the list. It says, number one, no other gods before our God. No graven images. Don't take the Lord's name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day, for it is holy. Honor your father and your mother. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not commit adultery. Do not lie. And do not covet. I'm telling you that commandments are still just as true today as they were back in the book of Exodus. 
And we need to stay close to the commandments of the Lord. A commandment is not a rebuke. A commandment is a protection that God has placed around your life to help give you joy and peace and long-suffering and walk in the fruit of the Spirit and walk in the Spirit of God. Is that your desire today? I believe that it is. It is our desire today. The second C of communication in which God speaks to his church is through conviction. Can everybody say conviction? Conviction. Commandments are God's word. Conviction is God's spirit. God speaks to us through conviction by the work of his spirit. Anybody feel the spirit of God in this Bible study today? I feel the spirit of God here because he's moving in this place. Convictions are beliefs and opinions that are not necessarily commandments. You can have a conviction that is not a commandment. Conviction draws us closer to God. Feeling convicted is a gift from God, and it draws us closer to them, and draws us closer to him when we live by our convictions. Daniel was a man of conviction that would not eat the king's food or drink the wine. David was a man of conviction. He wouldn't harm King Saul even though he had every right to because he didn't want to stand against anything that God has anointed. In Hebrews 13 and 18, it says, pray for us. For we are confident that we have a good conscience in all things desiring to live honorably. Convictions are tied directly to the desire to live honorably for the Lord. When the Holy Ghost brings conviction, listen to that still small voice. Can I just be a little more real with us here this morning? Can I break it down for us a little bit more? It's conviction that will make you turn off that TV show. It's conviction that will make you stop listening to that podcast with profanity in it or leave that party because you know that's not a place that you should be. It's the pool of the spirit that says, stop, this isn't good for you. This isn't good for your spirit. This isn't good for your relationship with me. And a lot of times we miss out on that voice because we're looking at commandments. But God is calling us not only to live by his commandments, but to live by our convictions. We are to be a people of God that live by convictions. When God calls you, to separate yourself from something, you should listen to that voice. When God calls you to stop listening to something, you should listen to his voice and stop listening to the other voices that have told you different. Conviction does that. The Spirit of God will do that. Conviction will help you draw a line that nobody else will draw. Conviction is the line that's going to help our young people get to heaven. It's going to be conviction that goes with our young people into their campuses when people offer them drugs and they say, no. It's conviction that will pull us into those intimidating atmospheres. And when peer pressure and the culture tries to say that something's okay, that God says is not okay, I want to encourage this generation more than ever that we are to live by our convictions. 
Don't be afraid to be different. Don't be afraid to be called apart and to be separated from things that the world says is okay, that we know the word of God says it's not. The third and final way I want to mention to you today of how God speaks to his people is through counsel. Commandments, God's word. Conviction, God's spirit. Counsel, God's vessel. God has always used people to speak his words. It's fascinating to think that God's word was most prominent on earth when he became a person. God, because like us, except without sin, so that he could become, he became like us so that we could become more like him. God uses people to speak to us. Romans chapter 10, verse 14, and I'll quickly be coming to a close this morning. Romans chapter 10 and verse 14. It says, how then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? That's in the Bible. And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. Aren't you glad for a pastor who listens for the voice of God? I'm so thankful for a pastor, a shepherd that listens for the voice of God and shares it with us. Brother Scott Graham is one of my favorite preachers, and he always says, I may not be the greatest looking guy, but I've got beautiful feet because beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace. You know, it's okay to have a good time in the house of God. I'm telling you, when you listen to the voice of counsel, when you listen to the voice of the word of God that's speaking into your life, I want to tell you that there's going to be blessings upon blessings that flow through your life. To be submitted to authority does not mean you always have to agree. For sometimes when you disagree is the moment that true submission steps in. And you say, I don't understand that, but I want to be covered by the anointing oil of God. Anybody want to be covered by the oil that flows from the head down? I want to be a part of that. I want to be a part of what Jesus is doing. I don't want to miss out. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place today. I don't want to miss out on what's happening because I can't listen when there's counsel. And you have to be weary of somebody who listens to conviction, but they do not listen to counsel because your conviction will not speak against counsel and your counsel should not speak against commandments. But the way that God speaks is perfect in every way. And so he'll pull all the pieces together. God will speak something to your heart. And then he'll send a person. And that person will confirm what you felt in your spirit. And you may not know what the next turn is. And so you seek counsel. And the counsel will say, here's what you should do. And you don't have to question it. You just have to say, I think God is speaking to me. I think God is moving. Has anybody ever experienced what I'm talking about? Maybe we could get just a few testimonies in the house. 
my life would be very different today if I ignored counsel. We underestimate the power of counsel. Proverbs 11 and 14 says, where there is no counsel, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Anybody feel safe in the house today? <laughs> the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in and they are they're safe. There's safety in the house of God. There's safety in the presence of God. There should be safety with the people of God. And so, John 10, 27, in closing, it says, My sheep, they hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I don't just want to be somebody that hears. I want to be somebody that follows. One of the most powerful parts on the shore with those fishermen, with Simon Peter, when they cast his net and it filled the nets, the Bible says so much that the nets broke. And Jesus told him, he said, I'm going to make you fishers of men. It's all so powerful. The story is so beautiful of what God did. But we wouldn't be talking about it today if it wasn't for the end of that chapter. And they laid down their nets and they followed him. And they followed him. Because when you make up in your mind, Simon, that you're going to listen to the voice of the Messiah, everything changes. Can you stand with me all over this house? Commandments are listening to God's words. Conviction is listening to God's spirit and counsel is listening to God's vessel. Jesus is speaking. This isn't just ways that he spoke in the Bible. He's still speaking this way now. Jesus is speaking. Are you listening? My desire is to walk in discernment so that I can know God's voice and follow him. He's always speaking. So I always want to be listening. My sheep, they hear my voice. And I know them. And I know them. When I get to heaven one day, I don't want him to say, I didn't know you. But I want him to say, well done. Well done. Can we lift our hands and just pray in dismissal? There's such a sweet presence of the Lord that's in this house today. Thank you for letting my, me share my heart with you. Let's pray for just a moment. We're done a few minutes early, so let's pray for just a minute. Jesus, we love you today. We thank you because you are good. God, would you help us to listen to your commands? Would you help us live by our convictions? And would you let us be submitted to counsel? Lord, sometimes counsel is not easy. It's not always what we want to hear but we want to be obedient to that because we don't want to just hear what we want. We want, to, we want to listen to what's going to save us. We want to listen to what's going to get to heaven. I don't want to just hear good things that make me feel good about myself spiritually, but I want to be challenged because I want you to know me. I, I want to be a part of your flock. I want, to be, I want you to be my shepherd, God. And so would you help me, God? Would you, would you help me to submit my spirit? Why don't we just pray a prayer of repentance right now all over this house and say, God, forgive me for any time that my flesh desired to, to just hear what was nice and what was on YouTube and a nice Instagram reel that made me feel good, but then I ignored the voice of God that was speaking across from a pulpit and I, avo I avoided counseling. 
counsel and every time my convictions came, I ignored it. And every time you told me to pray for somebody, I ignored it. God, would you forgive me for that? I want to be different. I want to be closer to you. I want to hear your voice. I want to live by your commands. I want to live by conviction and I want to be submitted to counsel. If you love him, why don't you just clap your hands to the Lord and give him praise? And everybody said, in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you for letting me share my heart with you today. Please greet one another. Uh, we're going to start worship at 11 o'clock. Please take a moment to greet one another, and we'll see you in just a few moments. God bless you, and thank you for being